Again, what's so great about these tables, you don't care about the value, you care about the positive or negative for the intervals. Okay, in the second derivative, when you plug in negative one half, you get negative. Okay, now plug in zero to the original. Zero cubed minus three times zero minus two. We already got that one actually. And that right there is a point of inflection, which means let's it's, we don't let's plug in negative. Let's plug in zero. When you plug in zero to the derivative, what do you get? You get negative. And when you plug in zero to the second derivative, duh, you should get zero because it's the point of inflection, possibly. What value for this interval? One half. So I'm going to take one half, plug it into the first derivative. One half will give me one fourth, three fourths minus. Can you see how that's going to be negative? Is that correct? <coughs> Plug one half into this, and what do you get? Positive three. So that's positive. Okay. Plug in one. Plug in one to your original equation. One cubed minus three times one minus two will give you negative four. This should be zero because it's a critical number. And when we plug in one to the second derivative, you get six times one is positive. We plug in one to the second derivative. And what value do you want to plug in? 38,000 or two? I like two. So plug two into the first derivative. Two squared is four. Three times four is twelve. Twelve minus three is positive. positive. And plug in two to the second derivative. Two times six is twelve, which is positive. Okay, all that work. What does it mean? We want to talk about the characteristics. Characteristics. What does the first derivative mean? positive. It means it's increasing. You can either put something like that or the word increasing. Whatever is easier. Sometimes I just put like arrows. It helps me visualize. What does that mean? It means it's concavity is negative, which means it's... Could you also put concave down? Either put concave down or put a frown. Either put an arrow up or put increasing. Now here, if the, uh, what's this coordinate? What's the coordinate right here? One zero. Isn't it negative one zero? And if it's equal to zero, doesn't that mean it's a critical number? Yes. So isn't that a max or min? And if it's negative one, doesn't that mean it's concave down? So if it's concave down, doesn't that mean it's a relative maximum? Second derivative test. Okay. What does negative mean for the first derivative? Decreasing. It means it's decreasing. And what does negative here mean? It's concave, down. it's concave down. By the way, on the AP test, you want to use the word increasing, concave down, not pictures. <laughs> but I understand pictures. Okay. Here, our coordinate is 0, negative 2. Negative for the first derivative means what? Means it's decreasing. And zero for the second derivative means it's a point of inflection. But can we say it's a point of inflection yet? No, we have to verify that the concavity changes. So let's hold, hold off on verifying it's a point of inflection. Here, negative means what? Negative means it's decreasing. Positive means it's happy. Did we change from negative? Did we change our concavity? Did our mood change? Yeah. Yes. So can we write this as a P of A, P of I, a point of inflection? Okay, so we're good. That is a point of inflection. Next, 
we got one, negative four. Zero means it's a critical number. Positive means what? Concave up. Positive for second derivative. Doesn't mean it's concave up. Which doesn't that mean that point is a relative minimum? And lastly, positive for first derivative means it's going up. Concave positive means it's happy. All right. Now, real quick, could we also tell this is a relative min because it goes from down to up? Yeah. Isn't that the first derivative test? Relative min because it goes decreasing to increasing? Can't you also tell here this is a relative max because it goes increasing to decreasing? It goes up to down? So first derivative test or second derivative test. Either test is sitting right there looking at you <coughs> in your nice little table. OK. All that. Now let's make a sketch. OK. So for this interval, it is what? It is going up and concave down. So if it's going up and concave down. Oh, by the way, isn't this point, what is that point? Isn't that a max? And this is a point of inflection, and this is a min, right? Now, no, that's not a min. Never mind, let me just take that off. Ignore that. Sorry. Negative 1, 0 is a relative max. We know that one's a max. So in that interval, it's increasing and concave down. So can you tell that your graph will look something like that? And you're going to be turning around. Because it's concave down and it's going up. Now, for this interval from negative 1 to 0, what is it doing? It's going down and it's concave down. So, can you understand that it's going to be concave down and going down? Are we okay? Now, our next interval goes to 1. Oh, our interval goes to right here, right? Shouldn't we actually put this coordinate? Do we have a coordinate here? Yeah. 1, negative 4? Isn't there a point we should actually stick on there now? See, 1, negative 4? I put that on. So, from 1 to 0, on the interval from, um, sorry, from 0 to 1, it's going down but concave up. If it's going down but concave up, doesn't that mean it's going to keep going down, but isn't it kind of have a, a smile to it? And isn't this point right here, this blue point, isn't it a minimum? So from 1 to infinity, what's it doing? It's going up and happy, right? So wouldn't this turn around right here? Kind of really sharply. Kind of a weird jig there, to me too. So, can you see the graph? Does it look like a normal cubic? Is that a max? Is that a min? Is that a point of inflection? Did we go through all the points we said we would? It's a pretty decent sketch. It has a lot of calculus involved. 